Hello, friends, Romans, and also countrymen, and welcome to not a uh, survival craft. Today we're foregoing survival craft. Sorry about that. Um, one, I've been having some issues with the world. Um, it, it's not in trouble. Don't worry. But um, I've just been having some issues with new Minecraft, the launcher, and everything. So we're not going to be working on that. Also, I just want to show off. Um, what I've been working on with the PvP thing. It's evolved quite a bit in the past uh, little bit. Also, I've been out of town due to family stuff, so I haven't had a lot of time to work on it. But almost all the mechanics for it are done, and um, all that really needs to be done at this point is just build the map. So let's show off what we've got. Alright guys, to start, here is the uh, little lobby area. We've got this nice little um, sensor deal, which detects how many players are actually in the lobby. So if you see I fly out of the range, it says there are no players. When I fly in, it says there's one player. Um, really, really nice. Just a, just a nice little addition. Um, and what it's doing is detecting for players on a certain team. So I am on the lobby team, which is uh, the automatic thing that gets set up. Um, I'll explain this whole chunk in a second. But uh, let's just show you what I... what 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 exists, and then I'll go over all the redstone. So if we hit the enter lobby, this is the um, team selection lobby. Uh, so it's got the same deals uh, of, you know, player number indicator. Um, and this is the sort teams button. Now the one thing I need to do is do a lock system. You can see this is the, the lobby I was in over there. I need to uh, figure out a locking system so that once a bunch of players are in here, and this uh, button has been hit, then it locks out players from teleporting into here. Because what this button will do is it'll sort everybody that's in this room into uh, two teams. So if I hit this, boop, boop, I'm on blue team. Um, and it says, whispers to you, you've been put on blue team. So we are now in the blue team lobby. I know there are a lot of lobbies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't be helped. Um, this is all the pregame stuff. So I am on the blue team and in the blue lobby. Now the red lobby is right over here. Um, now I'm also going to add in some things that make sure it sets the people's game modes um, when they get teleported in. But uh, right now, because I'm working on it, I want to stay in creative. Um, but anyway, so this button, uh, I need to put a sign above it, is the press when you're ready button. So now it says blue team is ready. Now nothing will happen. Um, after this. Now, it'll, it'll just say blue team is ready. Now, what'll have to happen is that somebody in the red team uh, lobby will have to hit the red team is ready. And now it says match starts in 3, 2, 1, match begin. And um, what's happening now is I have um, some potion effects applied to me. So right now I have speed 2 applied to me. Um, I believe is that's what it is. Yeah, oh no, speed f whatever that is. Apparently I can't read Roman numerals right now. I think that's five. This will be constantly applied to me. This will always be applied to me as long as the match is, or the, the round is going. And uh, now when I hit whoop, the reset line here, which isn't really hooked up to anything yet, boop, you'll see the potion effect will uh, dissipate. Oh, and apparently it didn't dissipate. Um, Ah, uh, yes, this has not been hooked up to the reset yet. Um, that would explain it. So this guy needs to get hooked up to the, this line here, um, which actually should be hooked up. Um, I think this tunnel's under and... Yeah, so... Okay, so what I have set up is I have... Uh, this over here triggers the reset, um, I think. I don't know why I connected these up, actually. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, this is the thing that resets it. Um, as you can see, it was just a clock that was running consistently and giving me potion effects. Now let's go over why, uh, how this all works and why everything is the way it is. And let's start at the very beginning. This is a spawn capture, and uh, first thing, right off the bat, I'd like to thank uh, Raidstra. He's a guy that I met uh, after one of my live streams, and uh, he gave me this schematic for um, this spawn cap 
area. Um, so I didn't have to build a huge one, because he is also working on a PvP map. So, thank you, Raidstra, I appreciate it. Um, so, anyway, this is a big old box, and what it does is when somebody spawns in the box, um, they will fall down in here, and we've got all this redstone running here, um, and basically what this is doing is setting people's game modes and detecting uh, for players and all of that. So, basically... Here, I can actually show you. If I uh, go like this, kill, boop, respawn. Oh, you know, I forgot. It also sets your spawn to here. So let me um, reset my spawn point to over here. But So I actually did just spawn in there. But basically what it does is when a player first spawns into the world, um, they spawn in here. It teleports them to over there, sets their spawn to over there changes their game mode and everything. So next bit um, of the redstone. All this button does is sets your team to pre-game and teleports you to this lobby. Now, this is kind of the, the crown jewel of, of the whole system. Um, this is the team selection machine deal. And it's not even the team selection machine deal. This is just... Uh, the on and off switch for the team selection deal. Um, yeah. So let's just fly over here. Teleport ourselves in here. That just makes sure makes sure we're on the right team. So now I'll show you what's happening. When you press the button, this piston extends, push thus pushing this block of redstone in front of this repeater. Now that starts a clock, uh, which basically just keeps on ticking on and off and on and off, detecting for players inside of this uh, radius. And that's what this command block is. It's just detecting for players within the radius around this center point here. And then what it does is when it detects a player in the radius, which is this, uh, what is what happens when there is an output, output uh, into this comparator, the signal goes around here and into the piston, thus pushing it in front of here which then uh, makes it so that it'll activate uh, this strip of, uh, well, this this uh, comparator and repeater. So, just to recap, this, when it detects a player in this area that is on the pregame team, will output a pulse into this, or through this comparator, that goes to this piston, pushes this block here, which allows that same pulse that's coming out of this command block to go through this comparator and this repeater. Now what that does is it goes over here and starts another clock. Yes, I know there are a lot of clocks. Starts another clock that just teleports players to this thing. And I'll explain this thing um, in a second. It's very simple, and all it does is just uh, set people's teams. So, that is simple enough. Um, ish. But the, the hard part that took me forever to figure out was the reset line. Because what I wanted is not to have this consistently running. As soon as there are no players in this area, it should turn off. So well, how it does that is when a when there are no players, this will stop being powered, this uh, comparator. So this piston will retract. And there's a torch under this block here. Uh, so when it retracts, it'll send a signal up and over this way, sending out a monostable or sending it to a monostable circuit, which just sends out a short pulse, and all that short pulse does is just push this uh, block of redstone back into the regular position. Um, this, these are just uh, testing for players. Um, they were something that I was going to use before. They were just testing for teams um, so that it would lock out the, um, lock out this, this uh, piston when it would extend this piston when somebody was in here um, that was on the the a team and pressing the button, but I figured it wasn't actually necessary because players who are set to the teams are not going to be able to get into this spawn room. Anyway, this is the key thing. Um, this is the crown jewel of making the whole thing work. This is the way that you get uh, players on different teams, and this is the reason that I'm I'm really proud of uh, this setup. Is it can take any number of players and sort them into teams evenly. Um, and how it does that is very simple. 
all it does is uh, there's a pressure plate right there that when you fall on it, activates this piece of redstone, thus turning off this torch, and all we have here is just a T flip-flop, um, and what it does is just activate these command blocks. So it just swaps between these two. So every time it goes between this one, so then when somebody falls, it'll swap to this one will activate, then when the next person comes in, it'll swap to this one. And all it does is set the person's team, teleport them, and uh, tell them that they've been put on that team. So, it's very simple, and it basically what it'll do is uh, the detector will ran this this deal will uh, just select players randomly out of this uh, this area and teleport them in here. So it'll just randomly teleport every player uh, in the entire room here um, and filter them into two teams evenly. So then once they get in here, uh, the redstone is very simple. It's just an and gate, I think? I, I can never remember the names of the gates. Um, I think it's an and gate. One that needs two uh, inputs to turn off. But basically, it's just a piston with a, a block of redstone. When it gets pushed in front of this, uh, that activates just the red team is ready text. Um, and it also turns off this torch, thus turning off this input. Both torches need to be off for this torch to turn on. And then all that does is just... Uh, go through these command blocks saying match begins in, uh, or match starts in, and then three, two, one, um, and these are just the repeaters giving the delay between them, um, and then this is just, uh, these are teleporting players, um, on the team, on the red and blue teams, and right now there is no map in existence, so they don't have the spawns yet, but the spawns are being worked on. Um, on another world file, and then they're going to be teleported, or they're going to be teleported in. They're going to be um, uh, MC edited into this world. Um, and then it also activates this, which is just a clock, which is just giving uh, potion effects. So this is giving potion effects to both teams, um, because I didn't, if, if I said, like, give potion effects to everyone, then it would also give the potion effects to people who are in the lobby. So, just applying potion effects, and then over here, um, this is just testing for kills, and the idea is that when a team gets to a certain number of kills, uh, then the match will end, and that team will win. So, that's pretty much all the redstone behind this. Um, it's fairly simple for a, uh, a PvP map. So, there's going to be a little bit more redstone when the map is actually done. Um, whoop, I just dropped my thing. Um, but for now, yeah, this is this is the very, very simple redstone for the setup for a PvP game. Um, so I will be continuing to work on this, and the map should be done soon. Um, and I may try to get Raidstra in here to help me out um, with testing. So we, we may do a video. That'll be cool. Um, anyway... Oh yeah, yeah. So ooh, before I before I disappear, this I want to explain this. So this is my mystical um my mystical spectator mode. Raidster and I have been trying to figure out a good way to do spectator modes, and we haven't been able to find the best way to do it um with maps or things like that. So I've been trying a map system. Um. So basically, what it does is uh. Whoop, Maybe it won't work because I'm on the wrong... Yeah, I'm on the wrong team. Um, need to set my team back to the lobby. Uh, when I hit spectator mode, it gives me a map, um, an empty map, and it says right-click to stop spectating, and it's right now detecting for an empty map, so when I do that, it teleports me back in. So that works, but the problem is it only works when there's one person. Um, and the reason for that is that it's detecting for the closest player with a map. It can't detect for a specific player with a map, meaning that you may uh, you may click the map um, and then it'll teleport you back, but it might also teleport someone else back, or it might teleport someone else back instead of you <clears throat> um, because they happen to be closer to the command blocks. So that's why that's problematic. Um, also, the map logic thing is basically it's detecting for a um, filled map or a, a, a used map, not an empty map, because those have two different item IDs. So when you fill the map, then it detects that and then sends out a redstone pulse to that um, those command blocks. 
Now it's really useful, except for the fact that it doesn't work with multiple people, which is why this is blocked off. Raidster has been trying to figure out something with a um, with a system of like a door that gives you a certain amount of um, health, and then it basically detects for the amount of health that you have and teleports you back, but you still run into that same problem of it doesn't work with multiple people very well. So anyway, this is all this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Um, and without further ado, bye. Hold on, I forgot to plug myself. I'm terrible at this video thing. Uh, make sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter, Facebook and Twitter.com slash namelesspixel. Um, we have video uploads, uploads to those things, so um, you'll get the video link if uh, you follow us on those. And also make sure to check me out on Twitch. I'm going to be streaming the map making process um, probably tonight, tonight being Monday the uh, 22nd, um, around 7. Uh, but yeah, check me out on Twitch, twitch.com, or twitch.tv, sorry. Oof, excuse me. Twitch.tv slash splice14, S-P-L-I-C-E-1-4. Um, I will be streaming some stuff. I'm going to be trying to stream Dishonored. Uh, if that doesn't work, maybe some Borderlands 2. But I'm also going to be streaming the map making process. And without further ado, goodbye for real this time.